Hello, you recording people! Who wants to not use a cab? You can, but that's not primarily why we're here. If you want to attenuate something and then make a cab, you're also in the wrong video. We're looking at the Red 7 Amp Central, which is a load box slash IR loader. It's not an attenuator. If you connect a cab to it, it will be as loud as what your amp is pumping into it. There are so many of these boxes on the market, whether they're, they're two notes, Freyette power stations, uh, Universal Audio Ox boxes, uh, React IRs from Sand Rock. I'm forgetting so many of them. And all of them have certain features and others they don't. In this case, again, it is not an attenuator, just like the two notes studio and the two notes uh, torpedo live do not attenuate. The Captor X right there is an IR loader, virtual cap loader, or what they're called dynamic IR loader. And it does attenuate, but only two steps. So you have it fully loud, a little bit quieter, and then rather very quiet. So it's do it does attenuate, but not as detailed as you would want it. I just also reviewed the Harley Benton 250 watt power attenuator. As a recording tool, complete no-go. It distorts on the outputs, but as an attenuator, pretty okay. So if you like this, but you want your cap to still be on, but quieter, maybe put the Harley Benton 149 euro power attenuator behind it. So all of these boxes are a little bit confusing. Let's go into what this is. The primary goal of this is to be an awesome reactive load. Luca, the man behind it, is very picky about his reactive load and how that's supposed to feel. It's a feel thing for the guitar player. Now, what is, an, what is a reactive load? When the tube amp, like his Duality 100 or the Soldano or any of these, when that power amp, when those power amp tubes see a cab, a speaker. There's some kind of electric -y magic happening between them, and they speak to each other. When you have a resistive load, which is the cheaper version to do it, your amp doesn't see how that speaker reacts, and they're not talking to each other. When it's reactive, they do. And the better the reactive load, the more it'll feel like you're actually playing a speaker. That's, I think, the easiest way to uh, explain it. Now, there are two reasons to have a resistive load. A, budget, because resistive load is cheaper to do, like the Harley Benton attenuator only has a resistive load. That's why it's 149 bucks. And B, something that Luca just taught me, is back in the day when attenuators started, they were all resistive, and Van Halen, Mr. Eddie, pumped his... 100 watt plexi, crank the shit up, get the brown sound, and pump that into a resistive load, which had a certain kind of roll off in the top end and in, in, in bottom end that gave it his sound. So if you're a diehard Eddie man and you want that very classic, I make my amp quieter, but with the resistive load, that's when you need that. So A, budget, and B, you want that very classic old style attenuation. If we look at the front panel, there's a reactive switch that goes to resistive, okay? You can't tune the reactive load. You can't say what kind of cab it is. It's kind of built in. I don't know what they use, but it works. And you can also go to resistive. While we're here, there's the Henning Pauli uh, input. I can plug myself in. I don't know. It's the headphone out. Um, and there's an aux in, probably maybe to play along with. So I don't know what that's for. I have no idea. Oxid. Headphone level, big ass knob for that. Input level, which we'll get to, that's how you kind of tune uh, your uh, this thing to the amp. But it is very, I mean, I can't really even get this 0 dB to uh, light up without getting some distortion. So you got to be very careful with the knob. You see, that's 0, and I got to be here for my 40 watt amp. In here, we have four banks. One, two, three, four up here with red LEDs, one, two, three, four, presets. So you have 16 
caps. That's simple and it just rotates. Very simple to pick. 16 is more than you will ever need. This is also a push button. I don't know what that's for. Maybe if that's for a future feature, no idea. These are very nice knobs, by the way, with a big R on it for Red 7. It's definitely a high quality thing, made in Italy, by the way. So let's look at the back. Over here, ground lift. Stereo XLR out. No, the IRs are not stereo, they are mono, but this is for the effects. Uh, there is a 9 volt input, 300 milliamps, so you can run this on your normal uh, 9 volt power supply. I'm right now running it off a power bank with an angle power tap. Right next to it is the USB to load up IRs. We're going to get to that in a second. Then there's MIDI in and MIDI out. Yes, you can pr program this thing uh, with MIDI and remotely switch which speaker you're using for live uses. Next to this, we have uh, quarter inch output, so XLR or quarter inch. Then stereo effects send. Why the effects send a stereo, I'm not quite sure because it's technically sending a mono uh, uh, IR. So that could be mono, but it is stereo. Stereo return. This is the input from the amp. There it goes to the speaker, but not attenuated. And here we have a line out, which, where is it? Uh, there is a volume for it. The line out is very interesting because that is not processed. So the IR is not on the line out. So what you can do is use these XLR or quarter inch to record the IR and have the actual thing that you picked. But then as a backup, record the line out into your DAW and uh, on a separate track. And you could always run that through a separate IR if you wanted to, if you choose that what you picked in here wasn't to your liking. So that's cool as a backup if you wanted that. Now, why have a stereo effect loop in this, I ask? Because can't I just generate the IR in here, then take that line level into my, in this case, even tight ultra tap, and then run the ultra tap into my DAW? Just put the whole thing behind it. And obviously, Luca, the man behind it, said, yeah, of course that works. We're talking about convenience when you're putting this in a live rig. You can, of course, rack mount this with optional rack mounty ears. So you're putting this in a live rig and you want your uh, rack stuff, either your rack effects or whatever pedals you have, wired into it behind your amp, which is very cool. So that means you can actually have effects um, behind your really cranked Plexi or JTM or any kind of vintage amp that doesn't have an effects loop. And I'm going to show you, I have some of these. And then put it all together in here and run that XLR to the front of house. Because if I now wire this in, what I have is quarter inch and then I need adapters. It's just the convenience to have the effects loop in there. It's not a selling point, but it is nice that you can wire this up in a full live rack and then run it front of house with XLR, nicely balanced. It's not a selling point for the studio application. And here we go. We're running the Tone King Sky King into it on preset number one. And that's what that sounds like. Um, you can, by the way, uh, load, of course, your own IRs, which I'm not doing, but I'll show you how to do it. I couldn't make it connect with my computer. The trick is don't power it because then the computer will see it as a hard drive. So that's what that looks like. It's super easy. It'll show up as Amp Central. That's the drive. But don't power it. Don't power it. Turn it off. Pull the plug. And then the computer will see it. And there are simply four folders, uh, which are the four banks. Each folder has four folders in it for the four different IRs for the presets within that bank. Put in what you want. It has to be 48, 20, 48 kilohertz, 24 bit mono. If they're any longer than around 30 milliseconds, it will automatically truncate them. Do not use stereo and please make sure that they're 48, 24. If your IRs that you like are not that, please convert them in your favorite audio file program. WaveLab, something like this. Done. That's how easy you dump it in there. If they're too long, it will automatically shorten them. And that's how that's done. All the ones that are in here 
are based on Red 7 cabs. And I think the selection is great for cleans as well as drives, as we're going to see right now. We're going to step through them. Let's talk about level for a second. This is your input level. And I feel that it's difficult to level the point where I'm at zero to Digital to analog converter is not clipping, but I'm clearly hearing clipping. I mean, very clearly. That is not my audio interface input, by the way. It's clearly not clipping. So I really can't run it more than this. Which is fine, just saying, it's kind of weird. Too, I can turn that off. It's in the effects loop and we have stereo. Differences are more apparent with drive sounds. I keep that in there for fun. We're gonna go to the Red 7, Duality 100. about reactive loads there is something special about it there is something as more cabby there's no other way to describe it moving on <laughs> Red 7 cabs, they are similar, but I like how balanced they are. I really do. A little bit more bass. Thinner and more midgy. does have a an actual mic'd cab feel one that i really f it, it's so difficult to point your finger exactly at what it is doing but it is doing something right 
Obviously, if that's not variety enough for you, load up whatever you want. There's a billion ions out there. Uh, this is, of course, filled with their own. We're going to go to the Soldano SLO 100. See what works for that one. Way too much bass on that one. something completely different the mvp 66 which is very jtm ish so <laughs> it does feel more like it's moving air on a cab I, there's no other way to describe that Ah, uh, there's all, all that low end. We're gonna go to two. Bank one. Why is it bank zero? <laughs> doesn't have an effect flow. How do you get stereo effects or effects into it in general? Well, right here. This is neat. Do the same thing with the JSM 800.
level is the only thing that I think isn't really tweaked on this. But this is a, I think, uh, model number one or two or something. That might be something that they've already adjusted. It is something that you, of course, can adjust, but I think uh, just the range should be different. <laughs> So the bottom line, how is it different than other load box IR loaders? Stereo effects loop, okay, yeah, that's different. Price point, with VAT, I think we had a 720 euro directly from them in Italy. That is not inexpensive. That is definitely more expensive than the Captor X, uh, which also has a very limited uh, uh, attenuator built in. There's no software. You put IRs in it and that's it. So how is this better slash different? You'll have to play it. It's the only way to describe it. If there is something special about that reactive load. Oh, by the way, we haven't turned that off. So let's see. Oh, wow. All that realism, all that cabby, low end, wants to jingle my balls is gone. Still a signal, but the fun is gone. Yeah, it's clearly the attention to detail that they put into the reactive Venus. I didn't want to believe it when I saw it at the trade show in Italy at the guitar show and they told me the price and I was like, really? Dude, there's so much competition out there. How are you going to stand out? And he said, well, our reactive load's better. And then I laughed at him and said, yeah, right, ha ha. If this is what, what you're in the market for, you don't need attenuation, but you need the coolest big ball reactive load and you have your favorite IRs to throw in there, or the ones that are in there are already jingling your twits, then the Amp Central is for you. I'll put links below, I think, Leslie, for switching the video. I sent Luca for parking this here. It's going back to him. This is an unpaid video. However, uh, I'm trading this video as well as the video for the Red 7 Duality 100 um, for the Duality 100, which is a great amp, and that video is coming soon. Just for full disclosure, what's happening here. It's a good box. I didn't want to believe it, but now I do. And maybe you do. So links below, do whatever you want with them. Thank you so much. And animals at the end.